reason we are gathered at the doorstep of one of the institutions of government of this state. It's, it's the same reason people run for office. It's not naivete. It's not the idea that everything that goes on in there is going to be above board. It is the conviction, though, that part of what defines us as the American people is that we can go in there and we can use the pulleys and levers of government in the courts, in the legislatures, in the executive offices to do good, to make this union more perfect. And that's part of why I'm running for president. Because I believe that this country is worth the hope that is represented by the act of running for office. And then we have this president of the United States who used fear to keep us apart, to make us afraid, and to make some of our fellow Americans angry, to prevent us from coming together to make the change that we still need. Let me tell you the consequences of, our, of his rhetoric. It doesn't just offend our sensibilities or our ears. It fundamentally changes who we are as a country, our practices and our policies. You do not get kids in cages at the border until you've had a president who describes some human beings as animals or an infestation. You do not get the mosque in Victoria, Texas burned down to the ground until you have a president who has tried to ban all Muslim travel to the United States of America. You do not see a rise in white nationalist terrorism in this country until you have a president who describes the Klan, white supremacists, and neo-Nazis as very fine people. And you do not have an epidemic of violence against transgender Americans until you have a president who dishonors the service of transgender Americans with his transgender troop ban. He is inviting the violence and the intolerance and the hatred that will define this country forever after unless each and every single one of us stand up against it. That's why, as president, I will make sure that I sign into law the Equality Act to make sure that no state can take away the civil rights of any American. What America means to us is a nation in which we will end all forms of discrimination. Yeah! That means ending discrimination with regard to employment. Yes. It means ending discrimination with regard to housing. Yes. It, mean, it means ending discrimination regarding military service. Yeah. It means ending discrimination regarding marriage. Yeah. And it means being able to buy a wedding cake in any bakery Woo. in America. Yeah. As all of you know, unfortunately, we now have a president who is a racist, who is a sexist, who is a xenophobe, who is a religious bigot, and who is a homophobe. We have a president who wakes up every day and tries to divide the American people. His message is to the American people is that if you look different than your fellow American, they are your enemy. If you worship a different God than your fellow American, they are your enemy. And if you identify differently than your fellow American, they are your enemy. That is the message of this president. And it's shameful. And he's had a particular attack on the trans community. Right. where he's been denying them basic rights in their health care, in their housing, and not allowing them to exercise their patriotic desire to serve this magnificent country. This is a shameful administration, and we have to turn the page on it. So I never doubted that I would lead on gay rights in this country. Never once. Woo! 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 When I got to the Senate, when I got to the Senate, I met with members of the military who told me how crippling it was for them that they joined the military because of its character, its integrity, the importance of serving others and putting others before yourselves, and to have to lie every day about who they are and who they love 
was untenable to their core. And that's what our federal government was forcing them to do, to lie about who they are, who they love, and what's most important to them in their lives. And I asked around and said, well, who's doing what on gay rights here? And the answer was nobody was doing anything. Our greatest champion was Ted Kennedy, and he was dying of brain cancer. So I picked up the mantle, and I wrote a bill to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And you can't imagine it now, because you think, of course we got that done. But there was no of course back then. I went to the gay rights community and said, this is the bill we need to pass. And even our greatest advocate said, no, 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 we just need President Obama not to enforce the policy. And I said, no, it's not good enough. We can't have a law like this, so discriminatory, on the books of the United States that tells men and women who are willing to die for this country that their sacrifice is not worthy based on who they love. Thank you. And so I went to Democrats, and I said, we need to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And I'm sorry to say, some said to me, Kirsten, why are you doing this now? It's not convenient. And I looked them in the eye and I said, when are civil rights ever convenient? You do that because it's the right thing to do. The truth of the matter is that the same spiritual malfunction, the fear and the exclusion of the other, is as alive and well in America today as it has ever been. And so those of us who are the beneficiaries of generations who came before. Those of us who are beneficiaries of those who in defiance said, I will not apologize for who I am. Those of us who are beneficiaries of those who in defiance said, I will celebrate who I am. Woo! Those of us who are even the bene beneficiaries of those who said those things as they took their last dying breaths. Let us remember that we need to continue the legacy of those who take a stand. Woo! And today, there are those who would say, all right, you've done it now. You've really made me mad now. <laughs> because those forces basically say that if those forces were a person, they would have said, I told you it was okay for you to be gay. Just be quiet about it. And now you've gone too far. And now you're actually celebrating it. Now you want to be in the military. Now you want to have equal rights. Now you don't want to have discrimination. Now you don't want to have discrimination in housing. And you don't want to have discrimination in health. And now you don't want to have discrimination in anything you're doing. Who do you think you are? And we need to say, with all the power deep within us, the power of our ancestors, and the power that we will bequeath to generations after us, we are Americans. That's it. When you engage in the political process, you can make the kind of change that you want there's a hopelessness in many quarters of the United States today that we can't change things, that we can't make a difference, that it doesn't matter, that we're going to sit on the sidelines, that it's hopeless, that the powers that be won't let us change what needs to be changed. It's been the LGBT community, it's been the pride community in the United States of America that has shown all other Americans that this democracy was created, the very foundation, the very foundation of our government was meant and designed for us to collectively act to make life better for all of us. And you have been leaders in that movement, and we draw inspiration from what you have done along the way. You've inspired us, and so now it's time for us to take this to the next level. It's time for us not to be just worried about survival in the United States of America like so many people are. It's about us transforming this country into a nation that thrives, and we're, in which we rebuild the middle class, in which everybody has access to health care, affordable, accessible health care in the United States, that no citizen will be discriminated against, that every citizen can access a quality education regardless of what neighborhood they live in. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to finish my comments by thanking this community for leading the effort for justice, not just for this community, but for all communities. This assemblage and parade doesn't just help this community. It helps women finally get equal pay for equal work.
It helps me drive out racial disparity in our criminal justice system. It's the reason I've given pardons to thousands of people who've had marijuana convictions, because the drug war has been so racially disparate.